Chancellor, I now have great pleasure in inviting Mr Lawrence Wong, Bachelor of Biotechnology with Honours of this university, representing the graduates, to present the valedictory address. Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Academic, Members of Senate, Guest Speaker Mr. Ian Maynard, Academic Staff of the University, Distinguished Guests, Fellow Graduates, Ladies and Gentlemen. My name is Lawrence, and today I'm going to be talking about luck. I'm sure you all know someone in your life who seems to be luckier than other people. These people seem to have the right things falling to the right place at the right time for them. Wouldn't it be nice if you can have more of the things that you want in your life? And I think the answer to that question is obvious. The more important question we need to ask is, can we actually be luckier? Can we create our own luck? And indeed, research has shown that it is possible to make your own luck. You just have to do two things. One, be more open-minded. And two, do random things every once in a while. One, be more open-minded. And two, do random things every once in a while. Now, these things are easy to say, but hard to do. Why? Partly because opportunity come to us as a challenge, and we have to act upon them. And second of all is because we are sometimes too narrow-minded, and we only bother to look at what's in front of us. And looking back in my university life, I realized that these two things are very true. Example one, I joined an advanced study program in science out of a whim, even though I know that is going to give me more work to do, and I will have less free time. But I learned a lot of things, even things that are useful in areas outside science, and I met a lot of great people. But more importantly, I realized that I wasn't that passionate towards research. And that's OK, because in life, you need to know what is it that you like, but also what you don't like? Second example, I was reading advertisement at the Hawken Engineering Building, and I noticed there was one that says opportunity to go to South Korea. It was fully funded by the UQ Advantage Office and the University in Korea, so I applied for it, and I got it. And in South Korea, two major things happen. The first one, I got an inspiration for a TEDx conference. It's been running for two years now at UQ, and it's popular among students. But when my friends and I first started making the conference, it was really difficult. We were students who could not even boil water properly and we were organizing a conference. And the whole organizing committee was led by an international student who had no experience at all, aka me. But everything went well, and it was, it was successful. We had a lot of fun. And if I think about it, it's amazing all the things that needs to fall into the right place. If I didn't spend two minutes reading the advertisement at the Hawken Engineering Building, I wouldn't have gotten to South Korea. If I didn't go to South Korea, I wouldn't have gotten the idea for the TEDx conference. So there you go, two years of my life from two minutes of reading advertisement. Good investment. The second one, I met a girl, and she eventually became my girlfriend for about a year. <laughs> but we broke up. And uh, we broke up, and it's fine. But the whole, the whole experience was unique to me, because if you think about it, I meet hundreds of people 
every single day, but I met a girlfriend when I was overseas. I guess it's true when people say traveling opens your mind. So, remember everyone, be more open-minded and do random things every once in a while and you will be luckier. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been a great pleasure and honor to represent the group today. On behalf of all of us, thank you to the family who has been supporting us through all these years. Thank you to friends who made the university life really enjoyable. And thank you to the university staff for the amazing learning experience. Congratulations again, everyone, for graduating, and good luck. Thank you, Lawrence. Our valedictorians always speak from the heart.